Welcome to Brussels and the Royal Military Museum at the heart of the city. Throughout history, as they stare down the barrels of tanks and guns like these, generals have known that, however brilliant they may be, if they're to succeed, they rely on an adequate supply of troops and material. Nobody knows this better than the people down the road from here who today run NATO. This week, the North Atlantic Alliance is holding its annual summit. It's one of the most important in its history, and at the centre of events will be a question affecting a country thousands of miles away. How does NATO ensure that it has sufficient resources to win the fight against the Taliban in Afghanistan? In recent times, NATO commanders in the country have been beset by numerous problems. There's been a shortfall of troops and equipment. Many countries are prepared to fight in some parts of Afghanistan, but not the more dangerous areas. And trickier still, governments have not been able to agree on the purpose of the mission. So this week's task in Bucharest is to prove that NATO is back on track. I'm optimistic that Bucharest will bring good news. Uh, I'm only happy and satisfied as a NATO Secretary General when nations live up to what they promised, uh, and that has uh, proven uh, a bit difficult in the, in the recent past. But I think that the, uh, the signals are green on green for, for Bucharest, uh, as they should be. But a far more sensitive item on the agenda will be the relationship between the West and Russia. At the heart of that is one big problem, whether the two former Soviet states, Ukraine and Georgia, are put on the road to joining NATO. Russia is opposed to the idea, but the US is very much in favor of doing it now. This membership action plan coming into NATO has actually strengthened these countries as good neighbors of Russia. They are stronger democracies. Arguably, the relationships that the Baltic states now have with Moscow are more peaceful, more um, successful, both in security terms and in trade terms, than they were before they entered NATO. So it's time for NATO to stop being a four-letter word in Moscow. Many believe that Bush is pushing the issue to leave a political legacy in his final year in office. But that ambition is driving concern here amongst the Russian delegation. It's quite simple. To understand Russia's position, you've just got to put yourself into our shoes. NATO is a bloc in which we're not participants. We've not been invited into it, and the thought of inviting us into it scares people. So for us, it's an alien military bloc. Would you like it if an alien military bloc extended itself right up to your borders? So this week's NATO summit is significant on a number of fronts. For one thing, it will give us the clearest indication yet of whether the NATO alliance has the political will and the unity to press ahead with what it has started in Afghanistan. But the real significance will be what it tells us about relations between Russia and the West after the recent election of Dmitry Medvedev as president. Are we about to see Russia and the US moving towards the kind of rapprochement that existed after the fall of communism in the mid-1990s, or are we going to see both sides moving towards the kind of military standoff that dominated the Cold War? That's the big issue at Bucharest this week. I'm James Blitz for the FT in Brussels.